Hey guys, this is Derek Duplessy, host of Purpose Rockstar. It's a podcast where we interview people who found purpose in their career in all kinds of fields. Today's interview is with Gretchen Rubin, author of The Happiness Project, Happier at Home, and a lot of books about happy. You know, I really enjoyed this interview because I got to know the journey of the person behind famous author that we all know. It was really cool, and we got into a little bit about her writing process. I know you'll enjoy this. Welcome to the Purpose Rockstar Podcast, inspiring stories of people who found purpose in their careers five days a week. Unleash your inner rock star and tap into your highest purpose with your host, Derek Duplessy. Welcome to the Purpose Rockstar Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Duplessy, Executive Director of the Duplessy Foundation. We're helping inner city entrepreneurs to pursue their purpose by training them to run a successful business. This show is an extension of our mission to help you and people all over the world find purpose in their work. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Gretchen Rubin left a prestigious career in law where she clerked for Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor to get writing. She created success with The Happiness Project, a book that tells a story of her year-long quest to bring more happiness in her life. We talk about Gretchen's journey, her writing process, and her upcoming book on habits before and after. I think you'll like it. Enjoy. Purpose rock stars, let's do this. Gretchen Rubin, are you ready to rock? I am ready to rock. Beautiful. Well, Gretchen... Thanks so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you taking some time telling your story. I'm very happy to be here talking to you. Beautiful. Well, we're going to get into your story, the nitty gritty of, you know, how you became such a prolific producer of content and writing and things like that, what you're doing now, what you're excited about. Now, we're going to have a nice little lightning round. We ask you uh, quick questions with awesome answers. But before we do any of those things, I'd love to get a success quote. You know, uh, words of wisdom that's really stuck to your ribs, you know, throughout the years. Um, well, I love quotations. And in fact, I have a thing called the moment of happiness where people can sign up for a daily quote happiness quotation because I just love quotations and I have a million of them. And one, one that has really stuck with me is from Robert Louis Stevenson who said, there is no duty we so much underrate as the duty of being happy. And I think that's funny because you don't think of happiness as being a duty. Um, and it, maybe it's not a duty that you can always fulfill, but you can try to be happy. And anyway, that's just something that I think about a lot. Like, what does that mean to have a duty to be happy? Gotcha. And how has that played out in your life personally? Well, it's interesting because I think one of the things um, that people understand very well about happiness is that one of the best ways to make yourself happy is to make someone else happy. And that's absolutely true. And it's one of the nicest things about human nature is that when we help other people, when we make other people happy, when we support them, um, when we help them learn and grow and, you know, be, feel more confident and more prosperous and more safe, um, that makes us feel good. That's great. Um, but I think one thing that people don't understand as well is that one of the best, one of the best ways to make yourself happy is to make other people happy. But one of the best ways to make other people happy is to be happy yourself. And that's where you get into that duty of being happy. Because it's really true that happy people help make people happy. And if you're happy, you help to lift up the people that are around you. We, we pick up emotions from each other in a flash. It's called emotional contagion. You literally infect other people with your emotions. And happy people, there's just an energy and an openness that comes from being happy um, that helps other people feel happier. And also, I think when you're happier, you can also ask more of yourself. Like, you're more willing to take risks. You're more willing to help out other people. You're more tolerant. You have a better sense of humor. You know, when you're feeling really unhappy, everything that people do bugs you. You know, everyone drives you crazy. Everything is annoying. 
And when you're happy, you let things flat up your back. You can laugh at yourself. You can see the funny side. Um, and so I think it really is worth taking the time to try to be as happy as we can be, both because we're happier, and then, and then it really does help the other people around us. You know, you are um, a testament to my theory that left-handed people rule the world. <laughs> yes. You know, the, our president is is left-handed. Bill Clinton also left-handed. My best friend left-handed, and my girlfriend, the love of my life, also left-handed. Uh, it's really crazy. Um, so tell us a little bit about your left-handedness and just your journey from sort of you know someone who's just really loved literature and and writing to someone who's really taken seriously and become so prolific. Um, well, my left-handedness, in a way, worked for me because I, they never really taught me to write properly, and so my handwriting is horrible, which led me to spend a lot of time learning how to type very fast. And when you're a professional writer, the fact that you can type very – I'm like a – you know, when they grade you as a typist, I worked as a temp, so I got graded. Um, you get paid more if you can type faster. I was like the top level of typist which now is enormously helpful to me. So my left-handedness has, has really helped my productivity as a writer. Um, and, you know, I started out as a lawyer. I went to law school after, uh, after college because I didn't really know what to do with myself. And I thought, oh, it'll keep my options open. It's a great education. I can always change my mind later, all those things. Um, and I worked for, as a lawyer. I clerked for Pierre Laval on the Second Circuit, and then I clerked for Justice O'Connor on the Supreme Court. So these were wonderful uh, and magnificent opportunities as a lawyer. But I got to the point where I really, I, I had sort of been in denial of the fact that I wanted to be a writer. I think I'd wanted to be a writer my whole life, and I just, I didn't know what kind of writing I wanted to do, and I wasn't willing to admit to myself that that's what I wanted, because I was so, I think, terrified by the possibility of like, what would it mean to try and and possibly fail? And But at, at a certain point, it got to the point where, and, and I think a lot of writers feel this way, there's kind of a compulsion that people feel about writing. And I was spending huge amounts of time as, when I was working for Justice O'Connor, I'd stay late in her chambers, I'd work on the weekend on this big project, which eventually became my first book. But for a long time, I didn't admit to myself that I was working on a book. Um, but But it came to the point where I thought, you know, I would rather fail as a writer than succeed as a lawyer. And I, I hit a place just in my work life where I thought, this is my time to try it. If I take another law job or another job of another kind, it's going to be very hard for me to start over from scratch. Like this is my, I see this window. My husband and I were moving back from Washington, D.C. to New York. He was switching out of law. I didn't have a job. Um, I was like, you know, if I'm ever going to do it, this is the time. Like, I have to do it now or admit that I might never do it. And um, and so I bought a book from the bookstore that was called How to Write and Sell Your Nonfiction Book Proposal and followed the directions and got an agent, which is, like, actually the hardest part of the whole process. Um, and that is how I started as a writer. And then I had been writing for many, many years before I started blogging. Um, and that added a whole new writerly identity. Writing in a book is very different from writing a blog, very different kind of writing, very kind of different kind of discipline and thinking. And it's tremendously fun. So I have this whole, whole I added this whole new writerly identity um, now, like six or seven years ago. Um, and so that's been great, too. I, I still consider myself mainly a book writer. That's my, where my true heart is. But I love writing a blog, too. You know, there's more to that interview? Yeah, more. And you can find all of it at PurposeRockstar.com. Link is right there. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. So it's really, really awesome that you can go to PurposeRockstar.com. If you're one of those on-the-go Apple people, you can check it out on iTunes. There's the link. And for my non-Apple people, I'm going to make sure there's a link on Stitcher somewhere next to me. So you got iTunes, Stitcher, and PurposeRockstar.com. Tell your friends. Tell your family. We're on Twitter and Facebook, and somehow we'll be on LinkedIn. I don't know. But at least we'll be on Twitter and Facebook. And one final favor. Pursue your purpose. It needs you.